This video is brought to you by Squarespace, home of our new website, thewagapies.com. <laughs> Hello everybody, this is the Waga Pies, Rio and Chris. Today we're gonna talk about something very interesting, which is stereotypes about Japan that are not necessarily true. In fact, most of them are very explicitly false. If the internet is your main source of knowledge about Japan, then it's very likely that you believe in some misconceptions and we're gonna debunk them today. All Japanese people love to read manga and watch anime. I think this comes from the fact that anime and manga in general is really big in America and a lot of the Western countries. But not, not that it doesn't exist. It obviously exists in Japan. Yeah, it's, it's not everybody. It's just very strong individuals or maybe younger generation. I think Japan is very strong with subcultures and Japanese people yeah. can get very deep into their passions. So whatever hobby you might see happening in Japan, you might have a have an idea that it's very ubiquitous because there's just so many people who are very deeply into it but there's a lot of people in Japan and you know if something's niche it can mean a few million people just as well so yeah it, yes. <laughs> it's a big country everyone is polite at all times yeah cool. if you have the t time to get on a crowded train in the very early time mm -hmm. or in the afternoon you can see how people pushes you like mm -hmm. nobody says suimasen when they hit your shoulder step yeah. on your foot these kind of things happen also on the street it's still a very 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 polite country yeah <laughs> uh, i guess you can complain about people being kind of rude it happens it's not like everybody's 100 percent perfect in japan yeah everyone eats sushi every day <laughs> It's kind of interpreted as a really expensive meal most of the time, sushi. Really? Uh, yeah, unless it's like a spinny kind uh -huh. where like you can't really tell whether it's good sushi mm -hmm. that you really want to spend money on. So mm. a lot of Japanese families save sushi uh -huh. for like holidays and ah, weekends. So I see. Yeah. It's... Is there a meal that Japanese people eat every day? <laughs> every day. I think like just in well, general. Rice. Rice. Yeah. <laughs> When you think about, like, for example, the hanami season, cherry blossom, and people getting drunk in parks, uh, you often see uh, a sentence like, oh, everybody's drunk on sake, which is not really true. Uh, sake is a word that generally means alcohol, right? Popular alcoholic beverages in Japan include beer, uh, wine, whiskey, cocktails as well. Mixed yeah. drinks are very popular. Exactly. Yeah. In Japan, people don't drink straight uh, shots, for example, as much as in Western country. There's also a thing called chuhai, which is the favorite of every student that's on a budget and every young <laughs> yeah. tourist, uh, which is like the cheap way to get yourself pretty wasted. Uh, yeah, pretty happy. It's three dollars, and you go to a store and you buy it. It's like nine percent, really close to wine. Mm. Almost. It's like in this one hand. <laughs> On one hand, you have this very strong dress code for the salaryman culture, but on the other hand, you have all these people known from photo albums of street photography in Tokyo who are very expressive, like the very flashy, colorful that exist in Tokyo. But then you have these two contradictions, and what, what is true and what is false in there? I, I think it's like both ways you're kind of seen really a little bit negatively mm -hmm. in a way, because if you wear like lori, the clothing, from like that to like maybe a cosplay of some mm -hmm. kind you might be seen as like a little bit like a nerd yeah a nerd or like mm. a little bit absurd <laughs> that's weird because japan invented this clothing and yeah. a lot of people tend to be like judgmental but at the same time you have to wear a lot like you have to wear the same clothing a lot mm -hmm. of the time you know there's a conception of what casual is in, in japan it's like mm -hmm. you get a job and you have to wear casual and you to go to google you can search casual online it's like a white t-shirt and chinos and uh, that's casual yeah so, okay, we, we got a bit confused okay. So to sum it up, the truth is just somewhere in between because in life, things are not black and white. Yeah, it's a little bit gray. Samurais and ninjas still exist. 
Unfortunately, or fortunately, they don't. <laughs> I don't know which one's the positive like, one. You can't really cool. meet a real ninja in Japan. There are places that are like theme parks that offer some ninja or samurai experience. There was actually a very nice sam old samurai school that we visited with Kasha and Aizu. You can see, I, I know it's very dumbed down when you think about <laughs> Japanese culture to put nah. things like that. Yeah. But then when you're a foreign tourist and you see an older Japanese gentleman wearing a, a expensive kimono, yeah, he looks very dignified. This yeah. is as he close as you can get. very strong and like mighty. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, in reality, he's lies. probably not doing any uh, samurai things. He's just like, <laughs> yeah, attending right. his daughter's wedding or yeah. something like that. And with ninjas, there's... <laughs> Well, there's just not much to talk about. It's when you see somebody dressed in black, I don't know. Yeah, with their eyes open. They're probably trying to get into your wall and <laughs> trying to get into someone's house. Trying to, if they're climbing the wall, you probably Maybe the ninjas the just got so good, you, yeah. can't, you can't even see them anymore. <laughs> yeah, they're blending in. Yeah, they're, they're so good. It's not like people in Japan eat whales and dolphins every day. It's it's yeah. a rare delicacy. Sometimes it happens, but it's... Yeah. Yeah, I think like there's obviously the fact that we as as a race have not, not much opportunities to actually see a whale or dolphins in a way. Like there's no cruise ships that take you to go see mm -hmm. dolphins or whales. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't think there's a lot of empathy involved in that process. Oh, okay. I, I was having a sushi lunch with, with a friend and the sushi master was very excited to have a foreigner because it was like a, it wasn't in a popular area. He just gave me like uh, Savi's free uh, yeah. whale meat. I don't have a problem with this. I can try whale meat. I, I, I won't like cry. No. But uh, I think many foreigners would actually disapprove of, of getting this kind of gift. Yeah, I think so. Point number eight. Every Japanese person knows how to read every single kanji. Like if, if I have foreign friends that ask me how to read this kanji, how to read this on the mm -hmm. menu, I just go like this <laughs> when I don't know and okay. I'm like, I just do this and then I get my phone out and I just search what it is uh, and tell them. I think that occurs a lot in uh -huh. every Japanese setting because imagine you go to an onsen and they use all complicated kanjis mm -hmm. and there's just no way to read yeah. the specific type of reading mm -hmm. that's required for the exact set of kanjis. Mm. In my experience, it's uh, oh, yeah. Japanese people sometimes get confused when you ask them about signs and it's kind of taken out of context. I remember yeah. asking a Japanese friend, what's the kanji for like matcha or something? And he was ah. just like, ah. you'd know it instantly when you see it, right? Yeah, yeah. But then when you're like, you have to snap recall a sign and there's <laughs> over 2000 signs. Yeah. I, I guess it can get confusing. That it's rude when you give a tip in a restaurant or when you don't slurp noodles. In the case of tipping, it's not offensive, it's just confusing. Like, there's no procedure to deal with a tip. So, when you tip, it's just gonna be like they, they wouldn't know what to do with it. I think they just can't accept it. I think it's that way out of regulation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it just feels wrong to yeah. take a tip. <laughs> someone's spending <laughs> money. Like. Slurping noodles is just for your comfort when you eat. Maybe in some cases, cases mm -hmm. it could mean a compliment. Mm. It's like in specific, like old-fashioned soba shops, for example, okay. they might take it as a compliment. But it's just the norm. I don't think it mm -hmm. really matters if you slip or not. Mm. People assume that Japan is a super futuristic country with all the newest technology. It's in the 22nd century already. All the while, there are aspects of everyday life where Japan is pretty far behind the West. The uh, banking system is horrible. Fees are high yeah. and the online access to your account is very complicated. As a company based in Japan, we often have to go to the bank to yeah. get something done. All the while in Poland, I can't remember when was the last time I actually went to a physical bank location. Yeah. You can't do anything without actually mm. going to the location and changing things. Uh, I think the biggest part that you might find that's super futuristic are the toilets. <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. When, <laughs> when, when you build your opinion on yeah. Japan, oh, Japan based on the toilets, it's yeah. gonna be amazing. Yeah. Uh, 
super weird things are actually pretty normal in the Japanese context. Maid cafes, uh, host club. Figures of naked girls. How big high school girl costumes are. Ah, okay. It's weird, okay, okay. but it also mm. super weird if you find someone's like phone profile, like phone display image be a do be a photo of a school girl. Yeah, things like robot restaurant or all these types of theme cafes that are popular in Japan. They also come from a sense of humor, and it's not something that Japanese people just enjoy as a casual dinner option. A lot of the things that are confusing to Westerners about Japan are just as confusing to to the majority of Japanese people. Yeah. <laughs> Japan is super clean and there is no trash anywhere. It is clean, I, I can give it that. Uh, so, so, but it's no. not like you can't find trash or like disgusting things. Especially in nightlife areas, there's like drunk people, there's lots of vomit everywhere. It's a mess of bottles and cans and, and puke and everything. Rats, so it just looks like a total mess. Usually, you know, Shibuya is a mess at, at night, but like 10 a.m. everybody, everything's clean again. I must admit, I'm I'm impressed by how quickly this dirt gets disposed of. Uh, Japanese people love lining up in queues. We're not like lining up because we like lining up. Mm -hmm. It's just the fact that everything is really crowded and like very tidy sometimes. Mm. So that's where we have to. I think Japanese people though, they have a lot of patience uh, for lines. Yeah, I think. Compared to other countries. Yeah. I, I noticed that when I started living here that in in Poland, for example, if I saw a line of 25 people, I would just say, Bleh, I'm not doing whatever's at the end of this line. Yeah. And it's a normal procedure. You just walk into a restaurant, ask how much time you're gonna have to be waiting and they give you an answer 45 minutes and you're like okay our last and final point is this Oops. <laughs> Japanese people all live in houses with tatami or shoji. So tatami are, to, to explain, tatami are the floor mats. Yep. Uh, and shoji are the Japanese... Um, Sliding door. Um, I would explain this in a way that like a lot of dramas, movies released, mm -hmm. um, mangas, anime, a lot of the time the setting is in a house where at least one room has like a tatami floor mm. with a shoji. Or I think it comes from the conception that all Japanese people sleep on the floor and no one's gonna do that in a hardwood floor so I think mm -hmm. that happens a lot. I, I can think of one more stereotype that relates to this one which is in the West people often assume that Japanese apartments they're super clean super minimalist like kind of Zen experience interiors they were pretty messy I mean yeah. I don't I don't mean to be rude but <laughs> My, I, you know what I mean right yeah <laughs> I understand in Japanese culture you don't really invite people over to your yeah. house that much uh, because you usually spend your time out. So this is like your cave with like your own mess. So I think we Westerners, we have this idealized vision of you know, this perfect minimalist J Japan. For more information about this topic or other topics related to visiting Japan, our sponsor Squarespace empowered us to easily make a beautiful website that we're going to fill up with resources for planning your trip to Japan. With customizable designs, you too can build a website about any topic. Squarespace is offering our viewers 10% off your first purchase if you use the link squarespace.com backslash pies. Check out how easy it is to use with a 14-day free trial. I myself am guilty of that. When I came to Japan, I believed in some of these things and it took me a few years to understand how wrong I was. Yeah, I think that happens to a lot of people. <laughs> it's like, I think it would be really nice that like, if they just see this video and they know, then they'll have, they could enjoy Japan better. With all that said, Japan is a great place to visit. It's an amazing country full of super interesting things and there's more than enough to keep you satisfied for years when you come here, just do a small reality check with the Wagapais and Hi. don't expect the things that are just not here. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. Right. Like. <laughs> like. And subscribe. Like, subscribe. And press the notification button. <laughs> yes. Hi. Onegaishimasu. Onegaishimasu.